Today's video feels like full circle or just exciting. It's so nice to sit down and film something positive and happy and forward moving. My name is Mayor. Welcome back to another episode of the Marathon. As you can tell from the title, uh, today I am going to share with you my engagement story. This is something that's so freaking exciting. And I just want to start out by saying thank you so much to everyone who follows me on social media for your love and support and excitement. It took me over a week to actually read all of the comments and reply to as many as I could, or at least like like or love them. At one point, um, actually a few points, I would get a message from Facebook or Instagram saying like, basically we're starting to think that you're spam. So you need to slow your roll and stop replying to so many comments. <laughs> so I did, that's why it took me so long. But thank you on behalf of me and also my fiance. <laughs> uh, we really felt the love and it was exciting. It was like getting engaged all over again, posting it and reading all of your comments. We actually got engaged a few weeks before we publicly posted about it. And for some reason, that was always something that we'd said we would do. I got a lot of questions, first of all, so I'm going to answer your questions. Um, I think that's probably the easiest way to tell this story. <laughs> it's just like answer what you want to know. Also, thank you for all the questions. I was kind of like, are people going to want to see this video? Is this of interest? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. By your questions. Thank you. Um, so there was a couple things that I had always said, like if you were to propose, for one, I was like, do not do it publicly. I do not want anyone around. I don't want anyone filming. I don't need photos, which might surprise you considering a lot of my life is on the internet, but it felt very private and personal. So that was like my number one recommendation was that it was private and also kind of in that vein, we decided together that once it happened, we would keep it between us for a while and not really tell many people. And I'm happy that we did that. Also, I immediately sent my ring off to get sized because it was so big that I would do this and it would just like fall off. And that made me incredibly nervous so it was good timing like we were engaged but I didn't have a ring so we could keep it private but the rings back it's out in the world um, here we are so we're engaged <laughs> if you're new to my channel or new to my story I guess the backstory is uh, we have been together for over three years. We met January of 2019, which feels like a lifetime ago. <laughs> and we met on Bumble. So we met online. It is, if you're unfamiliar with Bumble, a dating app. And I was on a few different dating apps and, um, kind of would like go on them and off them and on them and off them. If you've ever dated online, you can definitely relate to the fact that it can be such a shit show and like you need to take a break from it. So I was on Bumble and I had actually deleted all of my dating apps in 2018. I started dating like later in 2018. Further backstory, I became a widow in June of 2017. So well after a year of that, like I did not date for a very long time. I had no interest, I had a lot of healing to do, parenting to do, just like grief and life experience. And like so much of that is a blur, like <laughs> to the point where my mom said we would have conversations at that time and I would just like stop talking. like and I don't remember that. And if you've ever been through trauma, I'm sure you can relate. Anyway, so 
Well after a year of being a widow, I dipped my toe into the dating pool and did that for a few months and then was like, well, this is awful. <laughs> so I deleted all of my apps. And then on like, I think it was January 1st of 2019 or December 31st of 2018, like New Year's, I like sat down with a cup of tea, reinstated my dating apps and thought like, okay, let's give this a try. And I don't think he'll mind me sharing this. If he does, I'll have cut it out so you won't have seen this. Um, so I reinstated my dating apps at the beginning of 2019 and we met like a few days into the year, like on Bumble, we matched. And he was actually going on to Bumble that day to delete his apps because he was at that phase too where he was like, I'm done dating. So it's so fortuitous and we talk about it all the time. The fact that like, first we met on Bumble, second we didn't even live in the same town, third I had just reinstated and he was about to delete them. Like he went on to Bumble to delete the app and saw that we had matched and saw my message. One thing that I love about that app, this is not sponsored, but if they ever want to sponsor us, great, would love to, fully endorse it. I liked Bumble because the woman messages first, that is for like heterosexual couples, uh, and I liked that. So I wasn't like inundated with creepers. It was my decision who to message first. Anyway, so we met then, did long distance for almost two years. He lived hours away and he does shift work so he would come to town like when he wasn't working. Um, and then he moved in again like well over a year ago and the biggest question that I got was, well there's a few questions. Um, one of the biggest questions was, did I know that this was a surprise? Did I know that this was a surprise? That's not your question. Was I surprised? Did I know that this was gonna happen? Um, yes and no. So like, in my own personal beliefs, I feel like if you're getting proposed to, it's probably been something that the two of you have talked about ad nauseum, wanting to spend the rest of your lives together. Um, and if it's a surprise, <laughs> that's just not my jam. Um, yes, I, I knew he was going to propose. We actually, uh, <laughs> again, I'll have to ask him if he's okay with me sharing this, but um, we knew we were gonna get married three months into dating. So much so that like, we started a Pinterest ring board, like a private one. So I would like put rings in there that I thought was cute. And so would he like for both me and for him. <clears throat> Obviously we never acted on it. And I'm really glad um, our timeline feels very, like it feels perfect for us. Um, but yeah, I was not surprised. Uh, we had been talking about it for a really long time, not since three months of dating, but I would say like in the last probably six months, there was more discussion. So I knew it was coming, um, but I did not see it coming the day that it happened. So he proposed <laughs> in the middle of the day while we were just on a random walk We'd gotten coffee and we were basically killing time until we had to pick Thomas up from school. <laughs> who does that? <laughs> My genius fiance who definitely wanted to surprise me. So um, no, I did not see it coming. We were on this walk and I was like enjoying things and taking photos as one does for Instagram. And <laughs> then I turned around and he was down on one knee and I was in total disbelief. So much so that I started to hit him because I'm a classy lady and just kept saying like, what is happening? What is happening? He's saying all these nice things and I'm just like, what are you doing? Like, what is happening? Looking around, looking around. He also managed to 
pick a spot where nobody was because that like I said that was my big thing and uh, so we he gets down on one knee he asks me to be his wife and I'm just like in a state of shock I blacked out I don't remember anything that he said um, I still can't believe that he surprised me because you know like Christmas I was expecting it New Year's Valentine's Day or anniversary like blah 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 I'd be like looking looking no so then when it happened I was in total shock and uh, it was just it was really special it was like so incredible that he was able to surprise me because I had had my feelers out for a while <laughs> so yeah so that was really special and um, what else did you ask or what else was I gonna tell you oh uh, this is probably my favorite part of the proposal besides like the ring is gorgeous and the fact that he asked me and really happy to spend our lives together but he <laughs> um, the day before he proposed he asked for Thomas's permission <laughs> I'm gonna try not to cry telling you this part. So I had class and they, the two of them had dinner and they hung out and then they went for a drive. As you know, Thomas is like favorite thing to do. And usually when we take Thomas in the car, he stims a lot. It's his favorite thing. Like he gets like sweaty. We stop putting him in his coat because like he's just so happy. He's so loud, like shakes a car. He loves it. But he said that on this particular drive, he was like talking to Thomas. They even drove past the spot where he was going to propose. And Thomas was quiet the whole time, listening, paying attention. The unicorn was asking him like, you know, would it be okay if I lived with you forever? How would you feel about us being a family forever? And Thomas was just like silent and you know, he's saying to him like, this is where I'm gonna ask your mom to marry me tomorrow and like, I've got a ring and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, Thomas is quiet, paying attention. Again, unheard of in the car. And he um, told me that they got home and I was just finishing up my class and they get out of the vehicle and Thomas comes around and stops the unicorn and he's like, oh no, like what's wrong? Like, did you forget something in the car? Like, are you okay? And he just like reached up and gave him a big hug. <laughs> As if to say like, yeah, this is a good idea and I approve. <sighs> and then the unicorn got all teary and was like, I cannot go inside teary, your mom's gonna think something's wrong. So anyway, that is for me so special. I mean, they've always had a really special relationship, but um, I love that he included Thomas and asked for his permission and in Thomas's own way, he provided it. Like, <laughs> just so freaking sweet. <laughs> I mean, he is a unicorn, right? A lot of you asked about the ring. Um, did I pick it out? Did I design it? What's the backstory? Did I have a say? Um, I'll just show it to you before we get into it. Do a little close up here. There you go. It is so pretty. So many diamonds. I swear the camera's not even gonna like focus on them all. I love it. I love, I don't know if you can see this detail. There's that little bit underneath, which I love. It's like a three tiered set of rows of diamonds in this is that a pear shape maybe teardrop i don't know anything about as you can tell jewelry anyway so i like i said we had that pinterest board and we had gone and i had looked at rings and tried them on last year like a year ago long time which I liked which I would recommend because I wasn't quite sure if I would like white gold I wasn't quite sure I thought I would want rose and then as soon as I put it on I was like no it's not for me it's not for my skin tone and 
there was a few that he had me try on that were just way too like big and elaborate and I didn't like. Again, yes and no. Yes, he knew the kind of vague style I liked. Like I wanted something that was a very unique shape that wasn't super trendy for 2022. Um, I wanted something that looked like a little bit more classic and maybe even vintage. I even said to him, like, if you find one secondhand or, you know, at a vintage store, like it doesn't have to be from a jewelry store. I'm totally into that. But this specific ring, I did not choose. I did not try on. He picked it out himself and it is like, it's my ring. It feels so perfect on my hand. I love how it looks. I love how it feels. It is quite a large ring, but it also is very light, which I like. Um, and it doesn't catch on things because that was another thing that I was worried about. Like I, I just love the shape of it. And it came with the band and has like a really nice thin row of diamonds, but it kind of goes like this. Um, which is another thing that I love in a wedding band, like the, if it dips down. So yes, I kind of had input, but no, I didn't choose it. He did it all himself. Someone also asked like, how much time a day do I waste staring at my ring? Girl, hours. <laughs> I posted on my Instagram last week, like does this count as distracted driving? Yes, it does. Um, I'm just gonna check. I screenshotted your questions. There's a lot of questions about our wedding which I don't have any answers for you. Are we doing it local? Are we doing destination? Are we doing a big one? Are we eloping? Are, like, no idea. To be honest, it will probably not be until I've graduated university, which isn't until next summer. Um, we both really wanna just enjoy being engaged. I don't have the mental bandwidth or capacity to plan anything while in university, while owning a business, while parenting, while like all X, Y, and Z. So um, no plans, <laughs> definitely not this year, probably next year, which will be a big year. I'll graduate university, get married and turn 40. <laughs> That's a regular age to do those things, right? I honestly thought this video was gonna be like five minutes. I should know myself better. Yeah, lots of questions about the ring. I love it. <laughs> Will I take the unicorn's last name? No. Very definitive. Nope. When are we getting married? Probably next year. Did you ever think you would get married again? That's a question I got a few times. Yep, absolutely. Uh, I knew like I said, I was not in any place to date after I became a widow and did not rush it, had no interest. But once I felt ready, I was never someone who was just like super casual about dating. I wasn't on Bumble like, hey, looking for a husband. But I also wasn't looking for a one night stand. I wasn't looking for a fling. If you are, like, you do you. I have absolutely no judgment. I think it's cool. I love that for you. But for me, like I kind of just already alluded to, I have so much going on. And in the finite small amount of time I had to dedicate to dating, I like was looking for someone to get to know, to date for a while. Um, and also like, I really enjoy my own company. So I was also okay being single. Um, and I like my own company so much so that I was very picky and basically needed to be like wowed or really struck by someone or really intrigued or feel those butterflies and that spark in order to dedicate the time. Because if you've watched my videos for a long time, you know um, sleep has been 
uh, an issue in this house since Thomas was born. And so if I was gonna be like staying up late to date, <laughs> missing out on my sleep it needed to be worth it so I always knew that I like wanted a partner but I was unsure about how they would fit into my life with Thomas and my life with Thomas was always the priority so that's another reason why like I think it was so perfect that we were long distance for so long um and the first year of our relationship, I can talk more about this in other videos. I have done some videos on dating as a widow, but the first year or at least like six or eight months of our relationship, I processed so much and he was so patient with me because I could just tell that this was something serious and luckily he stuck around <laughs> and was very patient. This would be another like kind of in that category question. Someone asking, saying they're a recent young widow and I'm wondering how the proposal felt, um, if you felt guilty, etc. No, no, I've done so much work therapy wise. Um, I don't even know, thousands of hours in therapy and we, myself and the unicorn, talk about everything. Like we talk about Jer, we talk about Jer with Thomas a lot. Um, no, I, I don't feel guilt. I don't feel any type of way except that I deserve love and I deserve happiness and I deserve a future. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't feel any negative feelings for sure. What is your wish or your hope for your blended family in the future? Health, peace, prosperity, adventure, love, laughter. We're pretty chill. We're pretty happy to be just with each other doing mundane things. I. I do see, you know, a lot of change in our life as I'm currently working to um, change my career and my trajectory, but just those simple things, health, happiness, laughter, peace, security, safety. What is my dream honeymoon? <sniffs> honeymoon is definitely like up there in priority, uh, especially like finances wise. It's different, you know, when you're like <laughs> in university, etc. cetera. Um, Dream honeymoon is definitely warm, palm tree, relaxing, where I don't have to cook. So an all-inclusive or something of that sort, whether it's like, I'm pretty open as to where, like Belize, Hawaii, Cuba, Mexico, the Virgin Islands, we're, I'm open. <laughs> so many ring questions, I hope I have answered them all. Also questions about like, what should marathoners wear to the wedding? And uh, reference to me crashing a marathoners wedding, Carlin, if you're watching, hello. Um, and shouldn't they be allowed to crash ours? <laughs> Oh, that was funny. Uh, speaking of marathoners, again, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who has sent us well wishes. And I even got um, some cards from some of you. So thank you so much for your love and your support. It feels like <sighs> celebrating this as a group as you've been with me for so long and through so much, literally. But that's it. Again, I can't believe that this video is so long, so if you've made it this far, thanks. Let me know what else you'd like to see in the future. <laughs> um, life's on a sprint, it's a marathon. Thanks for watching. Lace up, subscribe. Remember, you can do anything for 10 minutes, and you also deserve whatever it is that you want. Peace, love, relationships. Sol solitude, whatever it is that you want, you deserve it. And our wants and needs are different, 
but we can all like coexist together. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.